Hey everybody, and welcome to the Keep Watching Podcast, where we decide what to watch so you don't have to. I'm James. And I'm Sarah. And today we're going to be talking about Heart Signal Episode 4. But before we do that, Sarah, we should talk about what we thought about the previous episode of the podcast. And for anybody who didn't know, we did a special podcast on our adventure to a Monster X K-pop concert, which Sarah is a big fan of. Oh, it was great. I would say that's our best podcast so far. <laughs> that was supposed to be a little bit at the end of this podcast, but I talked a lot about my great love for these boys, so we had to make it a whole episode. Yeah, but I would say it's the best out of the two. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Okay. Well, well, maybe this one's going to top the pile. Who knows? Yeah. So I would definitely recommend checking that out if you just want to... Even if you're just being introduced to the K-pop world, it's interesting. But what did you think about the first episode when we talked about Heart Signal, Sarah? Oh, well, it took me a while to figure out what I felt about it because you finished editing it and sent it to me. And it took me a week before I would listen to it because <laughs> I was so nervous about having to listen to the sound of my own voice. Because my voice sounds crazily different from the voice I hear in my head when I talk. Yeah, I think a lot of people feel that way. I, I, I didn't mind. I actually felt pretty good after I listened to it because um, I've heard myself before, I guess. And I, I used to think I sounded weird, but I guess I've gotten used to it. And once I started listening to it, it was fine. I enjoyed it. It was just getting over that initial just nerves about the whole thing that took me a week. Yeah, I, um, I did the editing on the first one and I, I either have really loud breathing or i need like <laughs> i got like a pop filter for my mic so hopefully i won't i tried to like mute myself in certain places where like i could hear myself breathing but i did the best i could i, I but it's still i think it still made it through to the end oh i didn't i didn't notice your heavy breathing at all so Not i really? think it's fine all right, maybe i'm listening to it too loud maybe that's what was happening <laughs> Or I think in the same way that I'm going to be overly critical of every awkward pause I leave in, you're going to be overly critical of your own stuff and nobody else will notice. Yeah. But uh, for those who did listen to it, it sounded like they enjoyed it, especially if they had watched the show before. Yeah, that, that does help a bit. Then you actually know who we're talking about. Yeah, a couple of uh, family and friends who listened to it who hadn't watched the show found it difficult to follow the uh, all the Korean names and stuff like that so what are you gonna do <laughs> yeah hope that they watch the show i think is is what i'm gonna do oh yeah i guess that is the point point. and that's that's what that's what we really didn't get into in the first podcast is what is this podcast there <laughs> we just kind of we just kind of did one thinking it was it was kind of supposed to be like a practice never to be released to the public and yeah. yet here we are um we just wanted to like crank one out see how we liked it but then we liked it enough that we just thought hey this should be the first episode but because of that yep. we didn't talk about what the podcast is and to be fair i feel like what the podcast is will be at least slightly ever evolving like we never forced it all ourselves doing a whole monster x concert podcast i think that turned out pretty well yeah do you want to talk about what this originally was supposed to be well the original idea behind the podcast was that one of us would have seen a show an entire season the entire run whatever and the other person hadn't seen it and then we would watch the first episode and talk about it and then figure out if the person who hadn't seen it would like to keep watching the show or not yes but i just randomly chose we watched the first two episodes of heart signal together and then we were like kind of deciding on something to do a practice podcast on so i said hey let's just do a heart single episode three That'll and then it was a lot of fun. And then we yeah, we had so much fun talking about it. So we're that. back for episode four. Yeah. And Sarah, you've only watched up till episode four. Yes, of Hearts I have not I think I'm gone like, ahead. You're much further than I am. I think I'm like eight episodes in at this point. Okay. Um, so I haven't finished it. But it's still going strong. Um, still enjoying it? Still think you want to podcast about it at episode eight? Maybe eventually. We'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to what... I I have thoughts on what I want to podcast about next. Maybe take a break from this, maybe not. And then okay. but we can talk about that at the end. Okay. Are you ready to dive into Heart Signal? Oh, wait, no, no. No, no? You and I haven't talked 
much recently. Not super recently. Because after okay. the Monster X concert that we went to, uh huh. a week later, you went to a second one. Yeah, I did. It we was went great. to a second Monster X concert. And we're not going to do a whole another podcast about that. But after the closing song in this one, we will talk about... We'll do a follow-up with Sarah. Maybe talk about anything that was different between the first one and I the second one. I have so one. many thoughts and feelings. Okay, Sarah has a lot to say. It could be a whole other <laughs> podcast. We'll see. I'll try to I'll try to rate it in. But if you're curious about that, uh, stay tuned after the closing song. Okay, now are you ready to dive in? Absolutely. The big headline of episode four is that people are actually going to go on dates now finally <laughs> it's episode four <laughs> and we're gonna go on dates i would i mean i would say last episode i said hyungwoo taking all the women to his restaurant was the first date of the show um yeah but it was not officially categorized as a date by the show yes these are officially these are official, sanctioned dates yeah. <laughs> this entire episode is going to be the dates that they go on and i think a fun game to play throughout this will be let's each of us rate this date we can rate it or we can just say which date we would like the best not necessarily yeah. who would be on the date with you but just like the activities of the date yes yes what did the show open up with sarah as always we open with our panelists and their thoughts from the week in between um when it was shown and when uh they're recording again and my notes on this are they are obsessed with Han Hyunwoo. Just they're, they're talking about him and his, his restaurant and how everybody was reacting to that. Oh, really? Yes. I For some reason, I thought they were talking about Dokyun a lot. I think they were talking about Dokyun's popularity in like the social media of Heart Signal yes. at the time. Yeah. And uh, all the female panelists seem to know people who were like into Dokyun. Okay. But as always, they're contrasting these two boys. They're like, mm, very different style. Oh, yeah. They're like the main, yeah, that's like they're rivals for whatever reason. The show's made them rivals. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> even though they're not really, inter not even that interested in the same woman, right? Yeah. At the start of this episode, I would agree with that statement. Yeah. I, I, I'm hoping I don't get lost in the I've seen more episodes. I'm gonna try. <laughs> I'm gonna try to stick to this episode. I I think I'll I have it straight. Yeah, going into this episode, it seemed like Dokyun was into Hyunju, the young student, and uh, Hyunwoo was into Youngju, the girl with the real good hair. Okay. At least <laughs> as marketing. far as I categorize. She works her. in marketing <laughs> for Microsoft. Or that's what I mean, yeah, right? sure, okay. sure, Microsoft, whatever. But her hair's real. The good. hair thing, you're still not. <laughs> I don't know if she has the best <laughs> hair out of the three, but that's what, if people can remember what Sarah likes, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> yes. Okay. So because this is going to be all dates, we get our first like montage of people like they're like outside the house for the first time, all of them. And they're all, but we're not seeing them together yet. I, at this point, we're not supposed to know. Who, who they're going to be on who. date, right? Yeah, I think at yes. the, yeah after the closing song of our last podcast, we went through and I spoiled who's going to go on which date for who. So if you listen to that, you already know. But while we're watching this right now, each person does not know who they're about to be on a date with. Correct. So we get a montage of a few people are like, a few of the girls are like outside in the rain with like an umbrella. So I guess it was yep. like unfortunate weather for whatever day this <laughs> happened on. Um, mm -hmm. And then other people, they show like, I don't know, like, buying flowers or something in preparation mm -hmm. for the date we just get a little montage and uh who's the who the first date that gets revealed sarah well so first we have hyunwoo sitting in a restaurant and i feel like they really draw out the suspense of revealing who his date is there's like shots of him sitting pondering and then shots of like a woman's feet as she walks and then shots of more of him pondering and then like a hand on a door and then finally we see that it's Hyunju <laughs> and he looks like a little panicked when he sees her. Oh, does he? <laughs> I, I can't think read so. this guy. I can't read this guy at all. So, <laughs> Well, um, that's his charm, right? You never know what he's actually thinking. I guess, yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, but yeah, Youngu starts. She brags a little about a little bit about she was right about the gift, which is a little weird. I, I it confused me a little because she makes it seem like she wanted to go on a date with Youngju and she like guessed the gift properly and that's why she's there. Right. But in the survey at the end of last episode, she said she most wanted to go on a date with Dokian. Right. My theory is that the gift she thought was from Dokyun was already picked, so Hyunwoo was her fallback plan. Yeah, she went third in like the gift 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 guessing picking process. So that 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 does make sense. I think that's I think you're right about that. But if you're on this date and she tells you, "Oh, well yeah, I thought this gift was yours." Like that's basically her saying, "I wanted to go on a date with you." Whether or not that's true, like that's how you got to interpret that, right? Yeah, I mean she's 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 definitely um like manipulating it a little bit to make it seem like he was her number one. Yeah. Right. Which is I mean, might as well. <laughs> I don't blame I don't <laughs> yeah. I have nothing I have no problems with it. Oh yeah, but it's like the most forthright sort of confession you can get in this show, I guess, just based on the rules and how everyone acts around each other. So it's like a little bit more on the nose than most of the stuff they say to each other. Yeah. I do you fully understand all the rules? No, not at all. Okay. They are written on a board in Korean and it never gets translated for us at least with uh, the the subtitles on Vicky. So mm, I I have no idea. Yeah, I think they're not allowed to directly tell each other that they like each other. Really? Hmm. I, my interpretation was they just like it had like the you can't tell your age and occupation like a lot of like the early days in the house mm -hmm. rules. I can't tell if they're not allowed to be open about their feelings for one another or that each person in this house just is not somebody that likes to be open about their feelings. I think it might be a little column A, a little bit of column B. I think back in the first episode, the um. The panelists, at least, made reference to, like, yeah, they're not, they have to give each other heart signals instead of directly telling each other how they feel. So, like. He said that? Somebody said that. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. I th that's why I... they have to have keen eyes for our, uh, heart signals in every episode or yeah. whatever he says in the opening. I kind of thought it was, you know, they're watching the edited version of the show. And maybe it's maybe it's just an editing thing. Like the show is never going to show us the person being straightforward with them. Mm. Um, and then like the judges have the responsibility of like looking at the signals and determining the people's feelings. <laughs> you know, maybe I do think in some to some degree there is some sort of rule about like hold back a little bit at least. Okay, I there's something that happens in the show <laughs> in like episode seven, I think. Some, I okay. forget what it is, but that makes it seem like that's not I, actually a rule. I, it only adds layers of confusion to what they are and aren't allowed to do, and or if these people are just insane about not wanting to talk about their feelings. Like <laughs> there's a there's like a misunderstanding, I guess, that like made. It, it makes you feel so many feelings. <laughs> I'll say that. Okay. I don't know. Oh, man. Uh, one day we'll Well, I'm looking we'll forward there. to that. <laughs> one day we'll get there, but, oh. Yeah. Um, but, okay, back to Hyungwoo and Hyungju. We find out that um, there's a little foreshadowing here because Hyungwoo has a an injury to his finger. Yes, and I love the translation. It's like... I can't touch water with this. It's, he can't get it wet, but I just love the way it's translated. It's funny. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I, I guess he had, like, burned himself or cut himself at work, I'm assuming, in the, the restaurant biz. Yeah, it's weird. We get we kind of get to see it later. It it looks like it's, like, something under, like, the side of his fingernail is, like, infected. I, I don't... I couldn't yeah. even tell if it's really a cut or not, but did they say it was a cut? Um... I think he has to get an incision to fix it. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, I don't know. It seemed like it sucked, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we find out that, but nothing comes of it here. 
I mean, Hyunju like expresses concern about him straight away. She's like, "Oh no, what's wrong?" You know, they yeah got a little moment about it. Hyungwoo has his this is one of Hyungwoo's moves early on, at, like everything, every date. I don't know if this is the first time, but this is definitely happens later in the show <laughs> where he just shares his hand wipes with whoever he's with. <laughs> <laughs> It's not really a dating move, though. I think he does it with the guys, too, at some point. He's just like, let's be sanitary. Like, yeah, yeah, he always has hand wipes before meals <laughs> ready to go. Um, I can respect that. Yeah. What do you have from this date? Um, I have that he seems just really flustered by her. Like, I feel he wasn't expecting her at all. And then she comes on, I don't want to say strong, but she'll, like, ask him questions that he doesn't necessarily want to answer. Um, like, okay, so they have this exchange that it's hilarious to me. He's saying he has fr friends from Busan, which is where she's from. And she says, I guess you like meeting people. What would you say? What would you respond if somebody said that to you? In relationship to where I'm from? Or just, just if somebody you were talking about, you had some friends. And and somebody was like, I guess you like meeting people. Oh, I didn't look. I didn't read that much into this translation, but yeah, it is weird. <laughs> he it's... says, "I like anything that moves. I like puppies what? too." <laughs> oh, okay. There's <laughs> there's some cracks there's some me up. There's some lost in translation here. I think, I think sure. so, but it was. <laughs> I could not stop laughing at that. It was great. Oh man. But it always feels like she's trying to nail him down, like. I don't know, you dating around a lot or whatever. And he's just like, I like puppies. Puppies are nice. <laughs> I guess this date as a whole, but it, it even starts here in the, they're in like a tea shop. Mm -hmm. um, Hyungju, I think Hyungju is great. The yeah. student, yeah. She's great in these uh, this date. Um, I didn't think much of her before this, but I, 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 I wound up liking her a lot after this date. Yeah, she's pretty charming. Oh, here's a note on Hyungwoo. Do you think Hyungwoo is too chivalrous? Do you mean, would I be bothered if he came over and, like, cut up my food for me? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, I would be bothered. Okay. I'm an adult and I can cut my own food, but yeah. I understand the gesture. What? It's... I think he... Does he... Did he do this previously or no? Is this the first time? Um, I think this is the first this is the time first I've time? seen it. It's like cake, too. Yeah, he's like trying to cut like it's it's something that I would just pick up and munch on like a muffin, but he's like I'm gonna cut it in half for you, and it's really awkward because he's leaning across the table and like using two knives to try to pull it apart. Was not a fan. I thought this was so awkward, <laughs> um, and he like doesn't yeah he doesn't cut it well either. I mean he does have an injury. I'll give him that, but still I guess. But yeah, I don't know. I I thought it was weird. Yeah, I agree. Anything else? Uh, tea shop was cute, but yeah, that's about it. The 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 women judges all reacted oh, like they were yes. all like, um, "Men Why don't go to my these husband tea shops." Take me. Yeah, so they were like, they were like, "I want to go on a date at this tea shop." <laughs> <laughs> I this this actually made me think, uh, uh, and I think we can revisit this at other points throughout these dates. But like, do you think the guys? chose these locations and activities or they, they chose from like a list of production options oh that might be well it seemed like in the last episode they were just given something that they had to write down where they wanted to go on it so that makes it seem like they just had to come up with whatever and pick something yeah i but i think production has some say on this for sure because they i mean they have to take a camera and go wherever they choose and there has it has to be like filmable yeah and they probably have to get like approval from the location and whatever yeah. and there's there's a lot of logistics involved so yeah there, there's some some merit to to choosing from a list yeah because after this tea shop which the judges kind of made it seem like it was not a normal dating spot <laughs> for a guy to choose mm -hmm. um they get in the car and they the next thing they go to is a VR cafe. Which seemed pretty cool. It was cool. That's... But do you think Hyung Woo wanted to go to a VR no, cafe? No, 100% that did not seem like I did not expect a VR uh, arcade from him at all. Yeah. And it's it, at times it seemed like he was having a good time. But there are other times where it it seemed like 
you know, this was not where he wanted to be a little bit. Is it, it's not where he wanted to be, or is his face just not able to yeah. express maybe that I just he can't read. to maybe be I, somewhere? Yeah, maybe I just can't read him. In the car ride over, Hyung, Hyung Ju was also grilling him with questions. I wouldn't even say grilling him with questions. She was just being a normal person and asking him yeah, questions. Yeah, she was, and she, yeah. He was, like, behaving as if she was grilling him with questions. <laughs> it's like he does seconds. this thing where he doesn't want to say anything that might be a little incriminating, like the existence of another woman ever having been in his life or whatever, and he'll just not respond and wait until she moves on. Yeah. And he also did the me thing with her as well, yeah. which I pointed out last episode, where it's like, I'm going to ask you a question. And then his first response is me with a question mark, as if maybe you're not talking to him. He hopes you're not talking to him because he doesn't <laughs> want to answer your question. Like, that's his response to almost anything he gets asked. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, but there is a thing in Korean that I think might explain that, except that none of the other Koreans do it. But it also ties into this moment in the car that I got confused about and then really liked. So he's asking her if she likes comics. And she says that she does. Or at least the subtitles say, I do. And then he gets really flustered by it. And the panelists all make a big deal about it. And I was like, what am I missing here? And so I, I re rewound it. And I did not rewind it. It's a modern age. I went back in time and I rewatched that part. And um, she says... Joaheo, which is I like, is the verb for I like, but without a subject. So it's not like it or you or whatever. Like normally you'd say the the word ordering is different. So you'd say it, I like, or you, I like. Um, but she just said I like. So like the way she said it in kind of a cutesy way could just could mean I like comics or could just be her being like, I like you. And that's why he got flustered. And I thought it was cute. But so that Koreans don't put subjects in say in sentences when it's clear what you're talking about because they just want to say less things. So like maybe all the time people are just saying things without subjects and he's like, well, I'm not sure what you're talking about. So I have to ask. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's interesting. I do remember the thing about comics and even the fact that they both liked comics. And do you think comics are like, dc marvel comics like what are they talking about here well there's a there that might be some of it but there is a big um like so japan has manga which i think is okay, also popular in korea but then there's also like korean comics which i don't know the word for um that are popular i think comics in general are a little bit more publicly popular than maybe like they're not deep nerd stuff like necessarily in america okay yeah i was thinking it might be manga or something but my when see people say comics, I'm thinking of like graphic novel, like Spider Man, Batman kind of stuff. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, of. I think this is referring to some more accessible things, like you know those little nice slice of life sort of things, or just about anything really. Yeah, they made it seem like you know they have a bunch in common or something. <laughs> That's what it. Yeah, it kind of made it seem it that way, but I don't know. It it, it felt like. I was missing something from this conversation, <laughs> honestly. And even though, like, he kept, like, not answering her or just, like, deflecting, like, it still felt like they were kind of bonding. Like, like they were having a good time, it seemed. Yeah. I, Hyung, Hyung Ju is, like, I felt she was doing so well on the date that, like, if she was making Hyung Woo have a good time, I feel like, she, all, like all the guys would have had a good time with her. Yeah. She's so good at dating that she made up for any of his, like, inability to human. Yeah, I think she was the most impressive out of the the women on this, on this episode. Do you have any notes on, like, VR Cafe? Um, they ride some VR horses, which is kind of funny because yeah. they have a full-on, like, saddle that you sit in that, like, moves <laughs> along, too. And there is somebody's some person whose job it is to just like make scary noises and grab them randomly in one of these VR experiences. Like it was a spooky haunted house or something. And I'm like, that's oof, wouldn't want that job. You're going to accidentally get like hit by someone who gets too scared. Yeah. I've never seen that before. It's, it was like, uh, they, the, the workers there had to like sync up whatever they were doing to you to whatever you were watching. And they had some sort of routine. One of them wasn't even like, uh, supposed to be like a scary house or whatever it was just like they were riding a roller coaster and the people were just like pushing them 
in the <laughs> yes. direction that you would like feel like you were getting pulled like on every turn. Mm-hmm. And that was, Whereas that normally was you'd think wild. you'd have a big seat that was like mechanized and would move around. Yeah, it was like but, a no. super, ch- yeah, I guess the not thousands of dollars version of that. <laughs> yeah. And then the biggest moment from the judges on this date that I have, yeah. Sangbin, our favorite judge, mm-hmm. starts talking about when they got to the BR place, they do a flashback and like Hyungwoo like kind of like is like pulling on Hyungwoo's elbow a little bit to like Oh yeah, she's just like leading him by the elbow just like, "Hey, look at this." Yeah, she's I guess she's just like they just got there, so I guess it's like if you're a shy person, you're like a little like stay close to me kind of thing that mm-hmm. she did. But I guess the judges were, or Sang Min really thought that was a big deal. And one of the other judges got into some sort of like discussion on dopamine and something else based on this elbow touch. Did you follow all that? So he was saying that like the nerves in your elbow, like you don't have a lot of them and it's not a particularly sensitive area. So like if you want to like initiate touching someone, it's not like shocking, right? So it's a good place to start having oh. contact with someone. Okay. I thought he was just like saying it was, there was something about the elbow that was like more meaningful in like a oh. sensitive way. I, I got, I, I thought it was like the reverse of what you're saying, but okay. Mm-hmm. That, what you're saying makes more sense. And then he was saying that the VR cafe was a good um, idea for a date because, like, the stuff that happens in your brain when you, like, are falling for someone is, like, similar stuff that gets triggered when you're in, like, a scary house or a exciting roller coaster or whatever. Like, so your brain chemistry is similar enough so it, like, just kind of works. Yeah, he got very deep into, like, you, like using the chemicals in your body in association with the person you're with to get them yeah. to like fall in love with you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You got very deep into that conversation. Which I do not feel like is what Hyunwoo was thinking about when he chose this yeah, date. Yeah, if he chose this date at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yep. Um, and the only other thing I have is that they have like a little, uh, they do a photo booth. And it's, mm-hmm. they take, like, the most awkward photos I've ever seen two people on a date <laughs> take in a photo booth Well, before. she's taking good pictures, and he's just there. Yeah, she's she's trying, and he's just, like, I, I guess this was the point where I, it made it me feel like he didn't want to be on this date. But he's probably just awkward with photos, which I can Yeah, I, I, I took it as him just being awkward. I feel like their conversations were good enough where I felt like he was having an okay time, at least. All right, so what do you think about this date? Um, It's a solidly okay date. I mean, technically, it's not done. We come back to them later. Yeah. In the episode. Well, let's but... just rate these. What do you think of these activities? If you had were going on a date with somebody, would you have liked these two locations? Yeah. Okay. I. You, do you want my date power rankings later or <laughs> yeah, now? No, just, just, like a, okay. just like a thumbs up. Or yeah, maybe, yeah, this is this is our first one, so we don't have anything to compare it to. But yeah, this this would be an acceptable date where I would not think I was getting murdered, okay. which is unfortunately a criteria. The tea shop was whatever to me, but the the VR cafe did seem interesting. It would have been like something I'd never done before, and might have been. I don't really like scary stuff, so it, I might not have liked that part of it. But um, they had a lot of not scary options. Yeah, it was like uh, it was a, a safe activity to have yeah. a, have a new experience with somebody. I liked it. Yeah, I thought he or production did a good job. Of yeah, you know, <laughs> this this, this I would say more than any other date that's coming up. This felt like a production choice to me. All right, who's next, sir? Uh, next we have a young Jew who is waiting in the rain with an umbrella and a scarf, and her hair's still real good. She's so cute in the rain. Um, and up comes Cuban the male young student and i have in my notes that young ju was also right about this gif <laughs> <laughs> i don't i don't know if i have more notes on this but I, she might have like gotten every gift right like when they went through and they guessed well i think at first she thought this was hyunwoo and then the like other ladies thought it was cuban at, and like maybe convinced her i thought you're talking about the scarf the scarf the scarf yes. for this date yes the second date she had an off comment about, I think there was just a jab at Cuban being like, 
being like, oh, he's just a student, so he would have bought he would have got scarf and flowers instead of jewelry. Like oh, I thought did. that was Hyunju who said that. Oh, okay, wait, wait, we're getting crossed up. I'm yeah, I'm saying Hyungju got both these right. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah, yeah. Hung Hyungju, the the female student from the first date, she yes might have gotten picked every gift and whose it was correctly. But okay, yeah, I see, yeah. So what so what do you, what do you have from this one? Well, we don't get much right away. They're just kind of walking to their next location. He's like, oh, no, it's cold out. Let me hold your umbrella. And he gives her hand warmers that he has ready. But she already has her own. So they have a cute little, no, you keep one. No, I'll keep one. Yubin's good here. I think oh, he, yeah. like, I think he, like, carries all her stuff for her. Or I think he has, mm -hmm. like, I don't know if he gives her. Does he give her flowers right away or something? He does not give her flowers. I, okay. I'm thinking. He... Yeah, you're thinking of somebody later, <laughs> but um, now he comes in with the the hand warmer specifically is, is, is and carrying her stuff. That's his move. So I guess we we pretty much just find out that it's going to be Youngju and Yubin, and then we're cut away to someone else, which annoyed me because I was excited to see this date right then. <laughs> <laughs> so next, we see Dayun is in the rain now, awkwardly on the side of the road, and it doesn't. There's like no sidewalk. And I'm just like, who left her on this poor, like, intersection? Why? Yeah, it seemed like it, like, wasn't... It, was it, like, a park or something? It wasn't, like, Maybe? On, in, like, the middle of the city. Like, there wasn't a lot of um, traffic wherever she was waiting. Yeah. <laughs> but it was also Seemed a little abandoned. Yeah. All true. But who comes? Our boy, Dokyun. Dokyun, yes. <laughs> uh, oh. Can't wait to see. The judges kind of slam Dokyun a little bit here because they think he's just like super awkward in the initial like saying hi and being he's just like they they say he's like robotic like he caught he walks up he's like oh hi I guess like implying like oh we're dating okay and then he's like are you hungry I'm hungry and then they just like leave they don't really like <laughs> compared to like Yumin and Youngju who they like actually have like a real conversation while they're walking around he's just like are you ready to go do the date <laughs> he also shows up with a hand warmer for her but he just hands it to her and he's like you're hungry right let's go <laughs> yeah um so they get in the car and then i don't remember much kind about their conversation on the way there or if they even had one but <laughs> they, they like pull up to the restaurant that they're going to and mm -hmm. we haven't even seen what the restaurant is yet, or at least I don't know what it is. And Dayun is like, this is a restaurant Here? for old people. <laughs> <laughs> she slams it up. She said it out loud. I think she meant to say that in her head. And then she said it out loud. <laughs> no, she gives no shit. So she will let it be known that this is a restaurant for old people. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. And yeah, they go inside and it's like, it's like a Korean barbecue, which is apparently not the place you normally go for Christmas. Um, Western food apparently is, is what she's used to on Christmas. So it was, she was surprised. Yeah, that was interesting to learn. This is Christmas Eve, right? Yes. Yeah. So I don't know if old people specifically eat Korean barbecue on Christmas Eve or if, um... The restaurant, as like, as it stands always, just is a restaurant for old people. <laughs> I, couldn't... I think, yeah, it's a restaurant for old people, and it's a weird choice for Christmas. <laughs> so, like, it's a double whammy. And then, wasn't Dokian's logic it was just like, oh, people always eat Western food, so I thought we should do not that. <laughs> and just, like, yes. It was not much of a reason other than I think he just likes Korean barbecue. I was the yeah, I'm uh, pretty sure that's it. <laughs> and then I, 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 at some point, Dayan's like a little bolder than some of the, uh, mm -hmm. the other people in the house, uh, which I like. And she was like, I forget what the question was. I think she just said, what were the, what did you think the chances that you and I would go on a date with each other? Or something, and then he and just... he's like thirty three percent trying to just play it uh, off like he had answer. no expectation. That's a great answer. <laughs> and she also says like she didn't think that this was his gift, which is basically yeah. her saying like I was not trying to date you, my dude. Yeah, she's not trying to play games. I I respect that too. Yeah. Yeah, Hyung Hyungju was like kind of the opposite. She made it seem like. 
she got it. She one shot at Young Woo's gift. But Dan says, uh, I actually didn't think this was gonna be you. But she did <laughs> what he what she didn't say was that she was the first to pick, though. Dan was the first to pick. Yeah. And this is the first of two day on dates that we're gonna see in this episode. Wait, but this also she didn't even pick this gift. This was the leftover gift. So like he does not know that he's the leftover date. Like no one picked his stuff. Oh. Oh, was this the leftover one? This was the leftover one. This was one. the um the, the bunny with the, bunny with the bracelet. bracelet. Oh, yeah. okay. I actually didn't even think about which one was which. That's a good point. Um I wonder if he ever found that out. <laughs> I don't think I don't think I remember him finding that out. <laughs> I think at the very end he might have found out he, he found did out not really react the last, to it. Last chosen. Oh, not that he was the last, but that she went on a date with someone else. Oh, yeah. And then they find out that <laughs> that they actually played rock, paper, scissors where the loser gets to <laughs> I do gift. not think I do not think they told him that. <laughs> maybe, yeah, and maybe they didn't like this bracelet. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. They could have made him feel real bad if they told him the full story, probably. <laughs> I think they wanted to at least uh, preserve his feelings a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but we find out on this date that uh, Dan wants to bring a dog to the heart signal house and is just kind of, I it, may, it makes it seem like Dokin's like the first person that she's asking if he yeah. would be cool with this. And then that strikes up a conversation about animals, <laughs> which, do you want to talk about this? <laughs> So our boy Dokun loves animals, which is admirable. But um, he loves going to the zoo. He's like, I go all the time, and I love the lesser pandas, which I had to stop and look up, and it's a red panda. They're adorable. I get it. But he was also like, I liked them way before they got popular. So he's a <laughs> red panda hipster, which is hilarious. <laughs> but she is like, not about it. She's like, zoos are sad. <laughs> yeah, she, <laughs> he looks crushed. Yeah, she tried to be gentle about this. It seemed, and I at first she was just like, at first I, I I'm also not a zoo person. I like I, I she said I think she said I feel bad for them. Yeah, which I was like, yeah, go day and let's do it. <laughs> um, but then it kind of devolved, and maybe this was a translation thing. It kind of devolved into her kind of just saying that she doesn't really like animals that much which didn't seem to add up in the conversation but that's what i thought i saw i think it might have been like oh you know they always have the same thing and they're they're the animals are sad yeah. whether they're like because then he also asked about aquariums and she's like no none of that and all i wanted like more than anything in this show, what I wanted for the next stage of the date was for it to be a trip to the zoo because that would have been, oh, that would have been such an so awkward, hilarious funny. disaster. That would have been so funny. Actually, maybe it was because what they do next is like kind of like really montaged out of the show. <laughs> like they, it looked they like just they just went call to like, an audible and be like, mm, yeah, no what, zoo. what it was it that they, I didn't even write down what they did next because it was like, they went to a Christmas market, it looked like. So there were a lot of like, oh, oh they got their picture with little, Santa. Yes. I remember that. Okay. It was like 15 seconds. Little festive seconds. stalls. Yeah. yeah. The activity on their date was like 15 seconds because I guess it just wasn't interesting. Well, yeah. They were not vibing, to put it yeah. <laughs> nicely. Like, it was not working out. Yeah. The judges picked up on it really quickly. I think they picked up on it really quickly. Oh, so they yeah. were like, they went through the motions of the date, but they ended up more talking as friends by the end of it. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I just realized why he picked Korean barbecue. It's because then he'd get to cook for her again. And that's his one move, is cooking for people. Oh, yeah, that's true. Day on second date, she also gets cook, food cooked for her, but it's not Korean barbecue. It's that's some other self-cook place. Yes. Have you ever it's gone? like a seafood. Have you ever gone to these like self-cook places? I have not, because nobody ever wants to, okay. go to go with me, and you can't go alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't gone to these things either. I I. I, I imagine they're like super pop popular in like Japan and Korea. Um, oh yeah, but I've never I've never been to one in the U.S. So yeah, there there's one other thing I wanted for this date, which was for him to have to drop her off for her next date, but that did not oh, happen yeah. either. <laughs> yeah, uh, the her second date ends up seeming like it's the next day, yes. right? 
So I think this is the first episode that's actually like multiple days on the show. But yeah, the main thing I have on Dayan from this, I actually like Dayan after this as well. She was like, she was way more straight up than everybody else was in a way yes. that made it seem like, you know, it didn't seem like she was restricted in talking about her feelings, you know? <laughs> yes. Everybody else, or a lot of them on the show, just like I have, I would, I would say they speak in riddles. <laughs> yes. That's what I would, how I would describe it. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. They're always trying not to say the wrong thing or too much. And they actually wrap up this date very quickly and they just go and I think they, um, they just drink wine, which is how a couple of di- a couple of these dates end that way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a decent way to end a date. I suppose. I don't drink, so, you know, every time they're drinking on the show, I'm just like, what would I be doing it right now in this house if I was on the show? <laughs> so we're going to go back to Youngju and Yubin, and they also went to a restaurant. <laughs> surprise yeah every almost every except for the activities they do in between eating and drinking in these dates it's like every date is just like eat go somewhere eat again slash drink yes (laughs) which i guess if you're gonna have an all-day date like what else would you do but yeah it makes sense do you have anything about the location here oh wait no wait let's Um, talk about let's talk about uh the day and date now, obviously, oh. this it was not a good date to watch because they weren't a good match. But did you enjoy? I disagree. It was a to? great date to watch. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> that's true. It, if you're rooting for, um, <laughs> if you're Them rooting to get for together, people yeah, falling in not... love <laughs> on the show, it was not. But if you just, I'm rooting for people figuring out who they're compatible with, and they learned a lot in this date. It's just not in the way you'd want to, I guess. Yeah, I I enjoy just watching see how people react to being on a blind date it's interesting Mm -hmm. but as a date activity situation it was fine yeah i mean i've never been to korean barbecue so maybe that would be interesting although i don't eat meat so maybe not a a little tricky for you (laughs) i don't want to grade these dates based on the fact that i wouldn't eat the food they're eating but yeah um yeah the christmas thing the christmas like venue that would not have interested me very much I would say, yeah, yeah, worse than the first date, easily. Definitely. And we have, yeah, the first the first date's not even done yet, and we, we already know that this one's worse. <laughs> um, then we're going to go back to Youngju and Gubin. And what do you have about this restaurant that they decided to go to? Um, I feel like it was also Korean food, but Youngju did not care or say anything about it. She's just like, sure, let's have some food. Youngju didn't mind. Dan's the, the traditional Christmas korean person who wants western <laughs> food i guess i guess yeah youngju liked the restaurant she talked about decorations casually but oh yes it wasn't too much but then um the big moment this happens it seems like this happens like before they even get their food like almost immediately yeah, like right away yubin is like oh i have a gift for you like in addition to yes. the scarf and flowers <laughs> or no wait this isn't scarf and flowers yeah, oh, no it is the scarf and flowers, flowers. yeah, yeah. In addition to the scarf of flowers, I have another gift for you. And he takes out these, they're essentially like the shape of uh, playing cards. Mm-hmm. But on both sides, they have pictures. I think this is so cute. You like this. Okay. Okay. I love this. All this right. Talk, great... Tell me about it. Tell me. Well, just like he gets to show off his creative side and like they are legitimately nice pictures. And it's just like a cute sentimental thing. He's trying to say that it's special. Like, here, pick some for, you know, you to take. And she's like, you would have brought this out for anybody. And he's like, no, no, no. I mean, I brought it with. I didn't know who was going to be here, but I didn't have to take it out and give it to just anybody. So he's, like, trying to say that, like, he specifically wanted to give it to her. Or she's at least good enough to meet the requirement, I guess. Yeah, this this gets a Sangman out of his chair moment oh from yeah the judges where they're like oh he just said the right thing <laughs> he's so smooth <laughs> yeah and to me i didn't take it that way like i thought he was a little like halfway in halfway out on it where he was like if she didn't like the pictures she didn't want to make it seem like they were only for her like he was like oh i'm gonna give take whichever ones you want and then maybe i'll give some to other people if you like <laughs> out of the ones you don't want but then she quickly said, oh, can I have all of them? <laughs> and then I think he yeah. like, picked up that she liked them. And there was this random one in there that was like a shirtless picture of himself. Yeah, was that? Do you think that was an accident? 
he he made it seem like it was an accident, but like it seemed like he had these for a while at home. Like he specifically went home to get them before the date. So like maybe he forgot that it was in there. Yeah, and by home, he but means if not, like, that was pretty smooth. Yeah, and by home, he means like his actual home, not not the yes, yeah. And yeah, he like immediately was like, "Oh wait, you can't have that one. Give me that. Give me that." <laughs> and she was like, "No, no, no, no. Give yeah. that here." But I, it was like it w- it was an easy play to just like do it on purpose and then pretend like you did it by accident. So I, I wasn't sure. The judges didn't seem to react to that too much. So he acted sufficiently, like I believe, you know. So good job on that front, even if it was a ploy. <laughs> yeah, and then they also bond over the movie La La Land. Yes. They really start talking about La La Land. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The movie I've never seen. And I think I've never seen it either, but Gubin gets kind of like very, uh, I don't know, into like the sentimental part of the movie. Mm-hmm. And he's apparently it has a sad ending, but he yes. interprets it as like, he explains it. It's like something, if you think about it as like, these are their dreams or something, then it makes it less sad i don't know i've never seen the movie but from the context it sounds like maybe the starring couple of this movie don't get together but instead they follow their dreams i guess this is like the this is the like emma stone ryan gosling movie yes okay it's a musical this is the extent of the information i know about this (laughs) it's a musical yeah (laughs) but yeah this is like their big connection this la la land movie they both love this movie and he starts saying that, you know, like he's talking about this ending and how following your dreams is important. And he's like, you know, I thought that way for so long, but now that I'm so old, I, I think that, you know, <laughs> love is more important than dreams. And I'm like, you are a child. You yeah. are not old enough for this yet. Yeah. <laughs> but okay. Human is only 24, right? Yes. Like, yeah, yeah. Like your You're... brain isn't even finished cooking yet. Maybe don't give up on your dreams so easily. Yeah. I was like, he's going to. Um... Yeah, you're gonna have a lot more changes in the next few years, probably. <laughs> if I had to guess, so they they leave from this and they go to a uh, a jazz club, a super cool underground jazz club. That's what you get for dating the younger guy, though. You get to go to the cool places, and the and the club has wine, thank God. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they this the La La Land stuff comes full circle where Gubin decides to go up to the jazz guys and request a song, and I believe. He requests a song from La La Land. Oh, is it? I I guess I don't know for sure, but I thought for sure that's what he did. I, I mean, I don't know how popular this movie is in Korea that the jazz club would like have a song. Like, well, that song, song specifically is like a very popular jazz like standard. Oh, you recognize so, like, it, the song? Yes, it may oh. also be in La La Land, but it is a it is a large song outside of that. Oh wow! Okay. Maybe I'm giving Gubin too much credit here. I don't know. I mean, I'll give him credit because Youngju was like, do you think that they take uh, requests? And he immediately jumped up and went to go and request a song. I don't know that he asked her what song she wanted to request, but like, he was just like, oh, you want a song? I'll go get it. Like, I'm going to do this. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, he was like, oh, I know exactly what song because we of like this thing that we already talked about together. But he could just be doing, like, the weird, like, chivalrous thing where he just does something without knowing exactly what yeah. she wants. I don't know. Um, but when he when he requested the song, this guy was another, like, big Sangmin judge reaction. Which is why I <laughs> yes. thought it was, like, oh, he rapped. Like, he came full circle on the date information. And he, like, Sangmin was, like, blown away. I mean, so I I she seemed to enjoy the song. So, like, it seemed like a good move overall. Yeah. Gubin, I, I thought he did good. Yeah, my final note here is Gubin is good at dates. Good job. <laughs> I mean, he didn't do that much outside of just, I guess, the photo thing worked. And then they happened to both really, really like a movie. So I feel like he just got lucky. There wasn't anything, like, super special about this date, in my opinion. I don't know. He's good at conversation. He picked a nice location. Like, I, I, I give him credit. I think he, he did good. Okay. All right. Where, where's, where's this date rank for you? This is the end of this one, right? Yeah, this is the end of this one. This is a great date. This is right up my alley. Okay. I love this date. This is better than <laughs> VR Cafe. Um, Both are very good dates. This one would edge out for me a little bit more. Wow. Okay. Wow. Um, I mean, it's... Yeah, drinking it's... wine in a jazz, a jazz club, I guess, is not 
that's my vibe <laughs> i could enjoy it but not nearly as interesting as vr cafe for me all right who are we missing and we've got our final Who's date next oh dayun dayun and, and jayho jayho <laughs> jayho the only person who gets to go on a date with the person that they said <laughs> they wanted to go on a date with from yes. last episode <laughs> so jayho comes out the big winner Mm-hmm. and dayun ch- chose first and picked his gift first right that's what you said yes so he's i don't know that she knew that she thought it was his no but... she thought it was uh young woos yeah for sure um, but she did not tell j-hope <laughs> <laughs> but even just winning like i guess not, not i guess not each woman would have picked the same first gift but his gift did get was the first round pick so yeah i don't know if he have to, gets to find that out but that that should feel good <laughs> At the very least, he gets to find out when he watches it later. Instead of they do the they do like the reverse. You, all these things have been like somebody waiting somebody somewhere, and then somebody walks in. But this time, mm-hmm. it's like they showed Jho with flowers walking around, yeah. and then he like goes in the restaurant, and then we get the reveal that Dayun's there. I guess that's not really a reveal. Yeah, at this point, you can do the math and figure yeah, out who's going to be there. I guess that's why they, they didn't make it as dramatic. They they just like pop into a coffee shop and they basically talk for like, I guess it wasn't as awkward as do- the way Dokin did it, but they it seemed like they talked for like five seconds and then and then they just like got up and Jho like got her like coffee to go or something <laughs> because they were yeah. like they were well he comes here. in he gives her flowers <laughs> he's like I'm so glad you chose my gift like you you're the only person I asked about what they like so you know like he's very specifically like I bought this gift for you I'm glad you picked it let's date yeah he's like legitimately excited I guess Cuban was probably the closest he did a good job with being excited immediately but yes. the other two like <laughs> we're not giving off the excitement vibes like immediately as the date started like Jho is in my notes I have I actually believe he's been on a date before which you know is is good <laughs> Oh, that's mean. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not that mean. Okay. It's a little I think mean. they've all been on dates before, right? Yeah, but like, this one seems like, oh, yeah, you know how to do this. At some point, somebody will ask everybody in the show, like, oh, like, how long is your, like, longest date ever? Or, like, some like some question about their dating history. Mm-hmm. And they all make it at least seem like they've dated for yeah a significant amount of time um whether that's true or not i don't know <laughs> <laughs> but there's a difference between doing a good job at that or or not yeah but i feel like jayho has gotten the practice and he knows how to go on a date <laughs> yeah. yeah he's he's just got he's like i think we said it was like he's just the most um outgoing out of all these people yes, so far definitely so they get in the car and then I, this is this is wild to me what they talk about in the car at least what i have <laughs> Day- came out of nowhere Dayun is like hella into ufc fighting which we had not seen any <laughs> proof of until this point and they decide this is the moment they're gonna do a flashback to her trying to watch ufc with dokun and jayho yeah and don't get a J-Ho when they're watching this in the flashback are kind of like, man, this is hard to watch. And they just kinda, I feel like they just kind of like leave and like Dayan's watching by herself. Jokin even says something like, should we be watching this together? Yeah, this, this... I think we need to leave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But the reason this comes up is J-Ho brings it up because he's worried that she likes muscular guys because yeah, she's, like she thinks he she watches ufc because the guys are so hot in ufc <laughs> which i guess is like kind of i guess that could be a thing i don't know could be but he's even like yeah i went to the gym yesterday because i was worried that <laughs> i needed to bulk up for you yeah that's great <laughs> which is also a great line he's like i'm gonna put in the work for you <laughs> like yeah. what do you want let's i'll get there i feel like i yeah, I would have said something similar to this, but maybe not actually have gone to the gym. Just be like, <laughs> just it's be like, true. I totally we did went not to the have gym a flashback just for you. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have a flashback of him going to the gym, so might be a lie. Who knows? Yeah, 
Jeho is just, I have to Jeho is just a very good talker. Like yes. What I most came away from probably after this episode was like I really wish Jeho and Hyungju had gone on a date together because I think it would have just been oh fireworks. That would have been too much charisma for Korean television. I think yeah. <laughs> they would have just like found up every little dark secret about each other with all their questions yeah. and their willingness to talk about it. <laughs> Actually, I don't if I don't know if if Hyungju had gotten grilled by somebody, I don't know how she would have answered questions, but she was very good at asking questions. <laughs> That's true. Hyunwoo asked nothing, <laughs> nothing except if she liked comics. So, yeah. he wasn't exactly with the hard-hitting questions. <laughs> yeah. But then Jeho kind of gets uh feelings like on his sleeve here. He and he starts mm-hmm. talking about how he wishes that he had gone to the restaurant with the girls <laughs> to Hyungwoo's oh, restaurant. Yeah. And it's like the judges, I think, are really reacting to this of being like, "Wow, he's like, he's like worried that that uh, Dayun is into Hyungwoo." And he, I mean, as he should be. Yeah, and but he, it, what's amazing is that he kind of picked up on this without knowing that Dayun tried to pick Hyungwoo's gift. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, they're going to go to the ocean to eat seafood, and this is another like cook your own situation. Yes. What do you have? from the from the seafood from the seafood time they do they they get into it and he keeps asking her about like if the girls talk about who they like or who they've gotten texts from and she's just like we're getting along now so we don't want to talk about any of that and ruin it oh is that what she says (laughs) yeah so is there even here like j-ho is like being like oh we could totally talk about like who's like the texts we get and like I, I, yeah i think at, th- at this point the texts are still anonymous right yes there's like a lay at some point they they like briefly mention it but i think at some point the texts start becoming not anonymous which i i haven't decided yet if i like that or not but i guess if you like randomly at some point like when these like couples start establishing if you like randomly get a new text somebody from somebody it's better just to know who it's from so I don't know if this was a planned change in the show or if they just decided that this will cause more drama if we just <laughs> not make it anonymous anymore. Yeah. So I don't know. I feel like they are not that restricted in what they're allowed to talk about anymore at this point. Yeah. Or J-Ho does not care. <laughs> yeah. Anything going forward from here, I think is just them being weird and wa- talking mm. in riddles. <laughs> yeah. This is not That's a restriction. Fair. Oh, oh, wait. With the, with the text, actually, J-Ho, he, I thought this was pretty smooth. He was like, I assumed that all the guys texted you. Yes. Yeah. That was pretty basically good. Like, he, he's basically just saying, like, oh, I texted you. Because I mm-hmm. thought all the guys texted you. <laughs> so, yeah. And, like, you're the best. Clearly, they would text yeah, you. It like, was like, of course. Yeah, it was, like, the right thing to say on so many levels. <laughs> yes. He is yeah. very good at this. Yeah, he kind of clutched up there. But then... Uh, Dayun actually, I forget what she said, but she actually starts talking about Hyungwoo a little bit. <laughs> yes. Uh, what was the context for this? Do you have that? I think like part of him saying like, oh, I thought all the guys texted you. And she's like, what? And she's like, you know, like Do Kun and Hyunwoo. And she's like, wait, Hyunwoo, you think he texted oh, me? Yeah. Like, I think he accidentally got her intrigued by the possibility that <laughs> he thought the guy she might be likes likes her. Yeah. Yeah, I thought Dayeon was like super transparent about this. I assume <laughs> J-Ho picked up on it. The judges picked up on it. <laughs> and then he was also saying that he wants to go to Okinawa. And she was like, oh, I was just talking about Okinawa with Hyunwoo. And he's just like, <laughs> really? You want to die? <laughs> like, that's a Korean phrase or that people say, like, really? Are you serious right now? They'll say things like, do you want to die? <laughs> Is that? I thought it was. Tra- yeah, that actually. Or I will kill you. Yeah, like it, it was, can be translated either way. <laughs> yeah, it was translated as like I will kill you or something, and I was like, okay, I I think I'm not understanding. This it's phrase. it's basically like, are you fucking kidding me right now? <laughs> yeah. Like, what? I'm sure it was. It's like playful though, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's not like. Okay. It, it's not scary. <laughs> yeah. At least I don't think so. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Jho super impressive. Yes. In this, and I just I just really wanted to see him with. Hyungju after the all these dates oh but wait then he's talking about the gift he gave her and i am not sure if he's entirely full of shit about it or not he was saying that the earrings like 
move based on like her heartbeat or something. So he got them so he could tell if her heart was beating faster when he was around. And I was like, this is bullshit. But then she's like, oh, I see it. And I was like, wait, what? I thought this <laughs> bullshit was happening. Yeah. Because it's earrings, right? Yes. It's like, how would the earrings... Like, is there a pulse know. in your earlobe that somehow could be rigged up with the earring hook? And then, Plus, I like, don't know. Plus, like, your head's moving around. It's going to cause things to move... It were just they... seems so ridiculous, but she was, like, into believing it. Were they studs? No, they were, like, dangly. Yeah, they're yeah. if they're dangly, that seems crazy. I don't know. Maybe what it was is that whoever sold it to J-Ho just absolutely got him. Like, <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Everyone I, was fooled. I believe that J-Ho thought it was real. <laughs> but whether or not it is real is, is a question. Okay. Fair. <laughs> And then they finish off their date. They actually go ice skating. Yeah. And all I have is that J-Ho can skate and Dae Hoon cannot skate. <laughs> Which I think Which is... Which is playful, I guess. Yeah, it's kind of the situation you'd want to be in where you get to, like, be close and help your date do a thing, right? Like... Yeah. It was also a thing, though, like, J-Ho wasn't so good at skating that I was like, oh, he chose this date and because he was going to blow... Like to everyone I date with mind. It was mm -hmm. like he just knew how to. He wasn't like I don't know, he wasn't blowing me away. Not that I can't skate either, but I wasn't like, oh wow, he's super impressive. <laughs> well, I did look up Korean Christmas traditions and ice skating is up there. So that also is probably at play. Yeah. I mean that one makes sense. It's just a winter activity. But okay, what do you think? This this is the end of this date. What do you think? Um, I hate ice skating, so it's a <laughs> it's a no for me. I'm not. I'm klutzy as hell. I cannot. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not good with skates either. The seafood thing seemed as fun as the barbecue thing. Yeah. Um, and then the coffee shop was like two seconds. So, <laughs> I I I love J Ho, but in terms of you know, if I had to go to these activities, they wouldn't have been. Yeah. Amazing. I think J-Ho, far and away, most successful at a date of all yeah. of the people. But J-Ho, like, it, this probably would have been, the, if you were going on this date with J-Ho, it would probably be the funnest date out of all of them. <laughs> if it was, <laughs> yes. like, the people, yeah. Um, but location-wise, I'm still VR Cafe. Okay. But you're Jazz Club. Yeah. My my power rank rankings are Jazz Club, then VR, then Korean Barbecue, and then Ice Skating at the end. Yeah, I, don't, I like the VR cafe. The other three, eh, doesn't matter which order. <laughs> <laughs> I guess actually, even though I can't ice skate, I feel like it still might be more fun than the jazz, <laughs> jazz club. Fair I, enough. I, I I could have fun doing all of them. Christmas, the Christmas like village or whatever that was, that was the worst. I mean, that's the equivalent of just going for a nice walk with someone, which is fine. Yeah, I'm not a big like festivals person either. Mm. Um. That's pretty much it. That yeah, that's the power rankings of the dates. We do we do go back to Hyung Wu and Hyungju after after their VR date and they're gonna go to another restaurant. Yes. And she asks him how he found out about it. And I think he said a friend of his who is a woman knew the guy that worked there and recommended it. I I think it was more specific than that. I think I thought Youngju specifically told Hyungwoo about this restaurant. And this made it this really made it seem like okay, this part of the date like Hyungwoo picked out for sure. Mm, yeah. Cuz he was hoping to go on a date with Youngju and I think they talked about this place previously. Oh. And then he ends up having like this super awkward conversation in front of Hyungju, who he's actually dating on this date, mm -hmm. with the, I assume it was the chef yeah. of the restaurant. And he was talking about how they're both friends, like Young, I think Youngju knows this guy. And he was in Hyung Woo was like, oh yeah, Youngju is my friend. And she recommended this place. <laughs> I thought it was super weird. Yeah, that that would make things real. I mean, that explains like how awkward things got then. They even showed like Hyung Ju's face through this, and it 
it made it seem like her facial reactions were like like she was trying to keep a smile but like it was like yeah it was like wow this is really weird weird like thing to be doing on this date with me <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of just how the rest of this date goes well then she basically asked him if he was into her yeah. and was like you know you were joking around with her and he's like i was not joking nope mm, young Wu. didn't young happen you. yeah and then like she kept asking questions and he just wouldn't answer and mm -hmm. she was eventually like it's okay oh you don't have to talk about it and segment was like out of his chair at this point because there was so much tension yeah it, it kind of just ended on a weird note and then and at some point i think segment just said i want to cry <laughs> from the judges like i think they, i think he just felt really bad for hyung ju mm. because she had to sit through this date which was clearly not going in a positive direction for her yeah and she was trying so hard to yes and even though even though she said she wanted to go on with a date with dokian like it seemed like she was also really into hyung woo as well yes I agree. To the point where I don't know why she said in a survey that she wanted to go on a date with Tokyo. <laughs> but yeah, super impressed with Young Ju. This restaurant didn't change my power rankings. So then we're going back to the, they call it the, the, um, the Heart Signal House, right? Yes, the Heart Signal House. And Sarah, what are they going to do? <laughs> After all these dates, actually, I don't understand the timeline on this. I don't either. Yeah, it's super weird. But he... They, these two are wearing the same clothes they were just wearing in the last scene because we're back at home with Hyunwoo and Hyunju. Yeah. So, like, they just came back from their date. Yeah. So, I, what's confusing about all this is that since Dayon went on two dates and they almost certainly did not happen on the same day. Because they both had some time where it was daytime and some time where it was nighttime. Yeah. Who's coming home with who on this night that we're about to watch at the house? Yeah. And it does seem like all the dates have finished by this point. So my yeah. theory is that they did two dates on Christmas Eve and two dates on Christmas. Okay. And is that based on who's coming home with who here? Um, This is based on logistics. It just seemed reasonable. Oh, okay. Because Hyungju and Hyungwoo, they really make it seem like they're just coming back from their date, and there's still yes. like that awkward feeling between them. Mm-hmm. Um, and does any who else comes home together in this? Scene? Um. Oh dang, I don't remember. I think people might come back separately because Youngju comes back alone. Um, does Dayun come back with anybody? I do not recall. Yeah. I, they really, like, the way that they set it up was, like, they made it seem as though they all these dates just happened, like, today, and none of them knew who went on a date with who. I don't know if yeah. this was, like, multiple days, and maybe they didn't even stay at the house for a few days. Like, they just did the dates and went home or oh, something maybe. like that. Uh, it, I Production-wise, it, it was kind of confusing about how this went out. And then on top of that, as soon as they get back, they're like, oh, what are we making for dinner? <laughs> Which I was just like, okay, there's, something's not adding up here. These guys, these people yeah, can't be hungry. <laughs> I think they were supposed to have a little, like, house Christmas party. So they were, like, preparing food for that. Yeah, that's but the other thing. But it's just like, how many meals? Like, we already watched you eat all your meals for the day. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, that's the other thing. Like, Hyung Ju, on her date, was like, Oh, like, uh, did you know about there's going to be like a Christmas party or Christmas mm -hmm. Eve party? I think it was Christmas Eve party, which made it seem like all these things were happening on the same day. I don't know. Maybe Dayan was like really like, like run thin on this day. And she was like hopping between dates. Like maybe she went. Like, she had to like fully change. Maybe that's why, I, yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's why like the coffee shop was like so fast because it was just like, okay, we need to like a. Uh, we need like a quick scene of them <laughs> introducing each other yeah. and Dan's going to go to another date and then she'll meet J-Ho at the th the thing for dinner. Because there actually is a big gap between, I don't know, they show, they show like J-Ho and Dan like going to the beach or something before they, but even that's at yeah, night, Yeah, they like right? get there right around like sunset, I think. Yeah, there's like... a big gap between, I, like I assume the coffee shop was in the morning. Oh. I, I don't know. Maybe Dan did go on two dates in one day. 
for them not to know who went on a date with who, like going into this dinner that they're about to have, it almost feels like it had to have done it all in one day. Yeah. All right, that's where I'm at. I think Dan just had two dates in one day, and even though they, they were just like made both, her change a lot, they were both day long dates, but they somehow, I, 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 I think she could have done everything with Dokyun except for maybe the wine, at the end, and then she went did everything with Jeho, and then went back to Dokyun to drink wine after her dinner with Jeho. That's a weird day, but it seems that's what happened. Maybe. Here. But yeah, they're going to come home and whatever happened on this day, they are ready to make dinner. <laughs> yes. More food. Uh, but this turns into a, uh, a more of a sad moment because Young Woo, being the chef in the house, is determined a little bit to help with dinner. Mm-hmm. And he tries to get plastic gloves to like cover up his hands while he cooks. But at some point, he did touch the water. <laughs> and... He's thinking that he has to go to the hospital. He even shows it. I think Dokyun, who is a doctor, was looking at it and he's like, no, yeah, you got to get an incision here to fix that or whatever. And so as he goes to leave, Hyunju follows after him and she's like, do you want me to come too? And he, I don't think he really even responds, but she's just like, well, I'm coming. And then as they're leaving, I believe Youngju is walking back in the house. I don't even know if she's with Yubin at this point. I think she's alone, and Hyunwoo goes down first and passes her on her way up and just does not say anything about where he's going. He's just like, oh, hi, hi, oh, okay, bye. Um, And she's like, okay, bye. And then she's coming further up the stairs, and then Hyunju is coming down, like clearly following after him, and again, does not explain where she's going. So it's like... From Youngju's perspective, it's just like, they're going out together, I guess. Okay, bye. Yeah, and Young Youngju, like, specifically asks Youngju, like, oh, like, what's happening? Where are you going? And then Youngju's answer was just like, oh, we're just going out. Like, she did not yeah. want... It's like, she... it To me, it seemed like she just didn't want Youngju to know that, like, Hyungwoo was going to the hospital and, like, didn't want her to, like, steal the moment from her. <laughs> Is yeah. that how you felt? Okay, good. That's yeah, it felt like she was just, like, did not want her to come with, didn't want, she's like, nope, I'm taking him. Yeah, so at this point, it really feels like Hyungwoo, Hyungju is all in, or has, like, fallen for Hyungwoo, despite yes. the terrible date that she was on. <laughs> like, I don't well, know, I get it the at ending all. was awkward. The ending was awkward, it- but, like... I don't know. I don't know if she felt some sort of like responsibility potentially because sh- she had gone on a date with him that day. They could have been like kind of a guilty feeling because they get to the taxi, they take a taxi over to the hospital and she actually ends up like crying a little bit in the car. Yeah. And I, I think this is like a little, I, I think it's just her feeling guilty that like he spent the day with her and then this ended up happening to him because he had to spend the day with her. Is that? I guess. I don't know. I don't, I can't imagine she's like actually like crying because she thinks like he's in serious danger here or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, I I could not get a good read on this. I I just thought like she was really in, like she likes him, and so she's upset that he's hurt. I guess. Maybe I don't know. It wasn't like a full blown cry. It was just like. She started tearing up. And yeah. Then she, and then Hyungwoo's comment was like, oh, I should have come by myself if you were going to cry or something like that. <laughs> but like not in a like he didn't, completely he wasn't being like, like I just said it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was just like, oh, I don't want you to cry sort of way. Not in yeah. a, oh, well, if you're going to cry, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I shouldn't have brought you. Yeah. It seemed like they both were just like they felt guilty for making the other person feel bad. Either like yeah. go through pain or like be sad yeah <laughs> which maybe maybe that means they they are a match <laughs> maybe <laughs> or maybe the, those two kind of people shouldn't be together <laughs> uh yeah and then so they start eating dinner without them and then this is where youngju finds out that <laughs> youngju like finds out i want to say like 15 minutes after this <laughs> that they went to the hospital together and she's like yeah. what the heck why didn't they just say that to me when they were leaving yeah. like what the hell so she's a hella confused and she seems sad about it too and i feel like dokyun looked super pensive the entire time like when hyunju was leaving and afterwards like 
he's still into her and is not pleased that she's off tending to Hyunwoo. Yeah, he he is the one that kind of like uh, brings up the fact that they're gone at dinner. Like yeah. He wants. <laughs> he seems bothered by it. Yeah, he's yeah, just like, I got you. Yeah. Meh. Yeah. And um, they quickly talk about they actually for some reason they thought there was gonna be another woman today. Yes. I don't know if this is like they've seen season one and this is like the spot in season one where there was like a fourth woman, but um. I have gotten to the point in the show where there is a fourth woman, uh, <laughs> but it did not happen in this episode. But for some reason, mm-hmm. they thought it was going to happen in this episode. At this point, the guys are saying that they think that one of the girls had two dates and they're talking like two dates. And she's just sitting there like, oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. They're so <laughs> they're so coy about this. Like, like, is it? I don't think this is even a production force either. They just like they just think <laughs> it's fun to be like playful about like. Oh, I don't I don't even remember who I went on a date with. <laughs> like multiple dates? What? What? I <laughs> couldn't possibly. I didn't go on two dates <laughs> in one day. Yeah, that's crazy. But eventually when Hyungwoo and Hyungju get back from the hospital, mm-hmm. all the girls are like talking in the kitchen together and they just tell every each other everything. <laughs> Basically. And the guys are just around listening. <laughs> and the guys like are only hearing like parts of the conversation. They're like piecing it together because like I don't know why they can't talk to each other. <laughs> there is a moment where like Hyunwoo and Dokyun are kind of sitting off to the side, just like staring at the rest of everybody, and like are half like, "Oh wait, who did you go on a date with? Oh, does that mean Youngju went on a date with this person?" And like. Hyunwoo is trying to figure out where Youngju was, and Dokyun is trying to figure out where Hyunju was. Yeah. Like, that's how it felt to me, anyway. Yeah, Hyunwoo was like hard trying to figure out where who went with Youngju, but but he was talking in riddles again, so people did not answer him <laughs> directly. Um, I think he eventually figured it out. Yeah, this is a future problem on the show. This doesn't go. <laughs> Hyunwoo's got problems with this. This is just a young wood thing. This is not a production restricting him thing. <laughs> I don't think. Makes it hard enough on himself. <laughs> oh man. And this is this is where we end off. Yeah, my okay. final note is Do Kyun and Hyun Woo are just sitting and staring at the group like some quality weirdos. <laughs> so then we have the the judges nonsense segment of the show. Yes. Which they change up this time. Right? This is the time they change yes. it up. Yeah. They change it up where they, instead of guessing as a group, they each get like one of the people in the house. And then they just have to guess that one person. If they get it right, they get like a stone thing. Yeah, they have to guess who they texted because we're who back to texting yeah. instead of an informal poll like the last time. Um, I guess it's a, it, this one was more interesting than some of the rest of the ones. I don't particularly care to go through it unless you want to. <laughs> I mean, I'll just say that everybody picked the person they went on a date with, except for Do Kyun still put, picked Hyunju. Yes. Well, Dayan didn't pick Do Kyun, right? Oh, oh but she, well, she well, picked went Jay-ho, on two who she went on a date Dayan with. Dayan picked but, Jay-ho because yeah. she had two date options. Everybody picked one of the yes. date, which, which makes sense. I mean, it's like they're just texting each other, and it's like... It's so easy to just to come up with something to say. Be like, hey, a had a nice time today or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So it makes sense. And the judges are able to like deduce this and figure it out. But there's a there's like a big one of the judges has to guess like two people and they make like a big deal of it. But then Sangman has this great line, which I loved is it says, what's the point of winning one one more stone anyway? <laughs> I would love to know that. I don't know what these stones are for. I haven't seen season one. What's the point of these stones? I can't imagine there's a payoff (laughs) at all for this. There can't be. I imagine that one of the panelists gets to be the the winner at the end for getting the most stones, I I guess. I guess. But, like, is is that really the point of the show? (laughs) Oh, man. Solid maybe. And then uh, this is the first... We get the next time on, and this is a they, this is like kind of like a running thing from episode to episode now, where like they'll set up basically like a love triangle that's going to be highlighted in the next episode. Mm-hmm. And I don't have anything specific about the next episode, but next episode is going to be a love triangle between 
Hyungju and Hyungwoo who went on a date together. Uh -huh. but, and then Youngju who went on the date with Yubin. Um That makes sense. They are they are the <laughs> three and they do this like cool little like triple box like diagonal slashes on the screen which is like these three people are going to be the highlights in the next episode. <laughs> um so it's a, it's pretty good. It's pretty good to get you to watch the next one that where they mm. they set up this these love triangles. I'm all about love triangles. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what makes these shows interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that's all I have. Anything else on this episode, Sarah? No, I was I was happy. We finally got some dates. Um, yeah. I'm still going pretty hard for Hyunwoo and Youngju, but. I wouldn't be unhappy with Youngju and Yubin. That date was pretty good. Youngju and I Yubin, felt like okay. they got along pretty well. There's plenty. <laughs> I you would think at some point like these people would just start coupling up and it would get boring, but um this this show keeps it interesting. Okay. And actually, it's not even the show keeping it interesting. Like the just like. <laughs> The talking in riddles really just keeps it interesting, honestly. <laughs> Their inability to communicate. Yeah, the, yeah like the yeah, the the <laughs> their lack of uh socialization skills really <laughs> makes this hard <laughs> for some of them. Yeah. So yeah. It definitely stays good. You still liking it, Sarah? Oh yeah. Okay. I enjoy so it. You're you're gonna keep watching. I'm excited uh, for this um this love triangle. Yeah. So what do you want to talk about next time, Sarah? Um, I mean, I'm just happy to be here. I, I could talk <laughs> about anything. I, this is where I'm at. I am still really enjoying Heart Signal. Okay. But there are a few things that have recently come out in real time. Uh-huh. Okay. That I think I'd like to switch over to. Okay, hit me with For it. an episode or two. Most recently, what came out was Obi-Wan Kenobi. Ooh, I hadn't even considered. Right now, only the first two episodes have been released. Yes. The way, the way I would want to talk about Obi-Wan is maybe we recap an episode a little bit. But I would like it to just trigger kind of like a more of an open discussion about the like short series content for Star Wars that has been coming up on Disney Plus. So the Mandalorian. I, can, um, I would love to talk about how much I want this Ahsoka show to be out yes, soon. Yes. 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 <laughs> there's, there's, there's a lot of content in the pipeline that we're excited about. But this again, this would not this would break the, you know, like the initial concept for our show we have that... never conformed <laughs> yeah. to the concept of our show i mean this is kind of the, this is almost it yeah like you it's not episode one but you are not watching ahead on these and i have yeah um, so i'm kind of like the i'm the one who's hyping up this show and seeing if you want to keep watching it but i believe you you said i think i heard you watched obi-wan the first two episodes today I did. Right. I did not I take notes. I will be happy to watch them. Yeah, again. I'd have to rewatch and take <laughs> notes again. But before we decide, the other thing, also on Disney Plus, <laughs> this one we watched together. But it after we great. watched it together, I said we have to talk about this <laughs> on the podcast. <laughs> is the show called The Quest, and it's one of the most unique shows I've ever watched. Yeah, it's a I can't say I've seen anything like it. It's a children's reality tv show with a I lot guess. of scripted content in it with a yes with a script centered around the most generic <laughs> fantasy <laughs> disney style setting over the top like makeup for uh creatures and there's like a real castle <laughs> that that's filmed in and there's for, like <laughs> the characters are kings and princesses and advisors to the king yes. and a bunch of generic storylines all wrapped up in this kids reality show <laughs> where they do like survivor slash amazing race like challenges in order yes. to like defeat these over the top makeup 
creatures that yes. it's, it's incredible it's it's something that we, I, we would not do every episode of the show it, we would just be doing episode one and maybe talking about mm-hmm. some of the later episodes that we've seen um yes. but i think this is a must we need to talk about i don't know anybody else that's watched this besides <laughs> us in my life <laughs> so it'll it's something fun to go through um i love both of these ideas so for obi-wan do you think it's better to do it before i think obi-wan's only like six episodes right i think it's very short oh is it I think, okay i think it's only like six episodes okay um and they've already released two and we don't crank out these podcasts super quick so we could <laughs> wait we could wait till the end of obi-wan or it could be more fun to talk about it and maybe predict what we might see in obi-wan I, I I like that idea. I think Obi Wan is more pressing than the quest. Okay. The quest, yeah, the quest is not as important on Disney Plus. They just dropped. I think it's only eight episodes. They dropped it. Yeah, they're all out already. They dropped. I think they just dropped them all at once. They didn't. Yeah. Um, whereas, I think the next Obi Wan episode is already coming out. It hasn't even been a week. I think they're already coming out with another one. It's like tomorrow. Oh, okay. So we'll. I think we'll we'll, we'll have seen at least three Obi Wan episodes before we talk about it maybe sounds more. like a plan uh but we'll try to talk about obi-wan next time before we fin- before the series is completed and maybe make some predictions and we'll get into the mandalorian boba fett maybe a little Ahsoka. clone wars content oh, okay. as well yeah, yeah i think the reason i i think this will be interesting to talk about is i think there's a large group of star wars fans who you know were fir- big fans of the original three movies mm-hmm. um lost faith in the franchise when the yeah. when the prequels came out and then yeah. they may have watched they probably came back and watched the sequel three movies and may or may not have been impressed with those yeah, and then probably felt a certain way about those. And then probably haven't absorbed all the other Star Wars lore content um, because a lot of it is in animated series where mm-hmm. they're like, they start out more designed for kids. So it's not something as an adult that you would really think to check out. But I think contains some of the best Star Wars. Yeah. Honestly. It has some of the coolest characters in As those <laughs> and now that they're making these live action uh seasons or mini series or whatever you want to call them um they're starting to tie more more they're yes. connecting the movies with clone wars and rebels and these other animated series and you're getting to see a, like kind of the clash of all these cool characters that are outside of the movies so it could be a good listen to anybody that is like Star Wars, um, but maybe, you know, lost interest in it a little bit, but doesn't isn't aware that there's all these cool things going on outside of right. just the movies. I think it's a great idea. I'm excited to get into it. Okay. So that's what we're going to do next. If you want to hear more Heart Signal and you're maybe you're disappointed with this decision <laughs> uh we actually have a email address right sarah we do yeah our email address is keep watching pod at gmail.com keep watching pod at gmail.com so Correct. you can give us feedback there let us know if you like the show or maybe let us know that you want us to talk about more heart signal <laughs> Or something. Or Whatever you want to honestly do. anything else. Stick around for after the closing song to hear about Sarah's adventure to Chicago and the second time seeing the Monster X concert in two weeks. Oh man. So good. Okay, thanks for <laughs> listening, everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Oh,
Okay, so Chicago for the second Monster X concert. I actually got a hotel that was like half a block away from the venue and I could see it from my window. Um, and they had a show on Saturday night, which got sold out, which is why they added the Sunday show, which is what I went to. So Saturday night, I'm just like peering out my window, looking at people line up and just hating the fact that I can't go. <laughs> It was pretty oh, rough. Oh, wow. Yeah, dang. And there were people lined up, like, around the block, like, so far that I could not see the end of the line because, like, a building was in the way. It was, it seemed more in, of a more intense line than, than what I noticed when we were in New York. What's the venue? Um, It is the Chicago Theater. So a similar oh. style to um where we went to see them in New York. Was it bigger or smaller, do you think? Um, I think, like... The lobby area, the like inside part was smaller. The theater bit itself was the floor was about the same size, but the balconies were a little longer. Okay. But there were only two balconies. So like it probably fits around the same amount of people. I didn't look it up. Okay. I was I was just curious why they for some reason in the Chicago one they needed they decided to add a second day. Well yeah, they just sold out on Saturday. So I guess just more people in Chicago were like on it buying tickets. But they sold out in New York too, but maybe it wasn't as fast. Yeah, they sold out um, like a month or two ago in Chicago. And I don't think they sold out in New York until like a day or two beforehand. Oh, okay. So, you know, Chicago Mambe Base, they uh, they got the work Dang. done, got us an extra show. It was popping, let's go. Yeah. So yeah, so then on the day of, I, I just had to walk from my hotel and um, there had been like a bunch of weddings at the hotel I was staying in like that day and the day before. So like three people asked me if I was going to a wedding because I was like in a dress <laughs> and I was like, oh no, I've chosen poorly. Am I too fancy? Like this is not the appropriate attire. She said, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> well, one lady did like, she asked me in the elevator, um, no, actually, sorry. When I was in line, somebody complimented my dress. And I was like, thank you. I was feeling self-conscious about this. A bunch of people asked if I was going to a wedding. And they're like, you should have said you were. <laughs> Just set, or five guys. It's like, <laughs> okay, but not that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was uh, pretty easy from a logistics standpoint because I kind of knew what to expect. There was a separate line for the VIP stuff. And they actually did most of that um outside so you know in new york we stood line went through security and then got in another line they just did the whole line outside so they were checking ids and putting on wristbands outside and then it was it was actually a lot smoother um and let's see what i noticed while i was waiting inside is that i think the unofficial hairstyle of mom Bebe must be those like i want to call them space buns or you do the two little buns on the top of your head and then maybe the rest of your hair is down or whatever. But there were a lot of people. And I was just like... Yeah, I saw that. There's a lot of these. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I guess I did see a good amount of that in New York. And I feel like because I had already had the concert the week before, like I was able to absorb a lot more information this time. Like I knew what to expect and I was less nervous. So I was like, oh, I see there are people here. <laughs> and there were actually a lot more guys that I noticed than last time. What? And we're talking guys with tour shirts on and with light sticks. There was one guy that had like a Juan headband with like the little bobblehead uh, Juhan face on the top. Dang. And there was a bunch of older people. There was definitely like somebody who was like 60 plus. And she was like, looked like she was with someone. Like she was following them around pretty hardcore, but like, that person seemed like an adult, so it didn't seem like she was chaperoning them. So yeah. it was pretty good. And there was somebody who had a Mon Bebe mom shirt on, and she had a real, like, wine mob mom vibe going on, which was <laughs> also pretty great. Okay. You know, so it was it was popping off in there on all, all ages, genders, and, I mean, still the ratio is pretty skewed gender-wise, but a decent yeah. amount of guys I saw. Do you think... Some people went to Saturday and Sunday. Oh, definitely. Definitely? Okay. Definitely. That's next if Sunday. I had had tickets to Saturday, I would have gone to both. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're going to fly to Chicago, going to both makes sense. Oh, yeah. If you're local, that's kind of crazy, though. Oh, no, no, no. 
if I was local, yep, would have gone. Uh, yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> the main thing I want to know, you're going to get to this, but I, I just really want to know how much of it was different and how much of it was the same, specifically in the talking segments. So different. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, okay. So first of all, um, I had a little moment with another lady who was there. She didn't have batteries for a light stick. And because I have to be super prepared, I had extra batteries. So I gave them to her and then we were having a conversation and like, she's like, who's your bias? And I'm like, Ming Hyuk. She's like, me too. And she's like, <laughs> and then Chen Kyun's my bias record. I'm like, me too. So like, we had a fun little moment and that was cute. Um, and it was like a party in there before it even started. So, you know, at a certain point they started just playing songs from Monster X. Well, the Chicago crowd decided that, oh, it's time to stand and sing and dance to everything. Like it was, Holy cow. it was much more of a party in there. Damn. They earned a second night, you know, they, they, Chicago's got it. Dang, man. Wait, what, what was the word you're saying for like your boy in the group? Oh, sorry. Okay. So your favorite person is your bias. Okay. Bias. So mine is Minhyuk, favorite boy. Um, a bias wrecker is kind of like your second favorite slash somebody who's like threatening to take the bias position all the time. Oh. And for me, that's Chen Kyun, the the one with the mesh shirt, if you remember. Yeah, the the ripped guy. Yeah, the the ripped guy, <laughs> but not because he's ripped, but whatever. Are you saying bias wrecker? <laughs> bias wrecker. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Like, they they just, sometimes you just feel a little attacked by them. Like, they're common <laughs> for that rank. Okay. I okay. I don't know how else to explain it. I, I get the bias thing. I feel like, like, K-pop as a whole is, like, almost designed for this, where it's, like, you know, there's X amount of groups out there. Like, once you get into the music, and then you naturally are just, like, okay, this is my group, though. And then within that group, you will almost like just naturally are like, okay, now I have to choose like who's my favorite out of the, like this group that I love. And then you just have the, you just have like this one person who you end up like obsessing with <laughs> like naturally <laughs> once you just get really deep into the scene. So a couple of things. First of all, there is a concept of also an ultimate bias who is like your very favorite person among all K pop. So like you could have, Oh. multiple bands that you like and you'll have a bias in each different group but your ultimate bias is like your very favorite person um for me i do not have more room in my heart for more than these seven boys so i refuse to like really stay in any other group it's just it's just monster x for me i listen to other music but i refuse to learn their names or like who's who i can mm. only handle these seven boys huh now that's a weird one because that's like that's like kind of like, okay, this isn't my favorite group, but you know, at that point you're probably just be like, but this guy is like super attractive or guy or girl or whatever. And that's why he's my ultimate bias. And it's not always about that. It's a lot of, you know, like, cause K-pop comes with a lot of all these extra like YouTube reality shows that they do where like you, they just, they do their cute little personality stuff and you just get drawn to whoever. Um, there is a K-pop podcast I listen to called Ask Me About K-pop, and they have um, said this thing that I find to be very true. Um, choosing a bias isn't choosing a bias. It's like in Harry Potter where the wand chooses the wizard. Like, yeah. I didn't choose Min. It just happened. He came for me, and like, this is it. I'm stuck now. <laughs> yeah, I get that. I'm not that deep, deep into, like, K-pop, but I've listened to it enough, and I've, like, I watched enough music videos that like i i would say i probably have a bias <laughs> even though i don't like i don't do the all the extra work of like looking at their social media stuff or whatever right. yeah and that would be somebody from twice uh, right some twice yeah uh i believe jin jin hyo jin hyo that I sounds like a person again i refuse to learn <laughs> other groups people's names because i cannot afford <laughs> to love more people i just yeah. can't <laughs> But my, but mine is like way more superficial, because, for all I know, like I, like wouldn't even like her personality. I have no idea. <laughs> it's just like I, I've, I've solely watched the, their music videos and made this mm -hmm. choice because how it's marketed just like makes you think this way. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fair.
G wait G Hyo, not Jin. I'm I'm getting confused because <laughs> there's another uh, yeah we watched like a like Korean reality show where someone was named Jin Ho. Oh right, yes. But it's I believe it's G Hyo. G Hyo sounds right. Yeah, I've never heard but anybody I'm say sure. it really. So I, <laughs> I'm not Jin deep enough to really know anything. That's fair. And I think it's fair to say that for Monster X, you have a bias, and that's Juhan. Yeah. <laughs> but the guy, well, we originally did this. I, I chose, um, I just, like, looked at their pictures and, like, chose somebody as, like, a exercise yeah. when we decided mm -hmm. we were going to this concert. But I ended up choosing the guy that's currently in the military. Yes, Shonu. So it's not really fair that I haven't seen him. <laughs> yeah, but he is also a vegan these days so you know you've got that in common yeah i didn't know that when i picked him but what i'm saying is i haven't seen him perform so to say yeah. that jew honey is my bias is seems a little like i haven't given the well chance in to the other several years when they're all out of the military <laughs> we'll have to go again and then you can yeah. decide so yeah it was party before it even started and i mean same set list obviously and because I, like I said, I'd seen everything before, I was kind of able to take in more. I, I, I made it a point to try to look at people who were not Minhyuk. Um, I was not always successful, but I tried. Um, and the girl next to me was, um, she was like recording the entire time, which was kind of driving me crazy because I'm like, you're here, just watch it. But that's super hypocritical because like I spent the past however many hours since I left that concert just looking at other people's fan camps on Twitter. So yeah. I shouldn't complain about it, but also she was just kind of like a little in my space, which was annoying, but um, people next it to was me, fine. People next to me in New York were recording the whole time. Um, for sure. Yeah. And I feel like I've, yeah, I've seen these like fan cam things on YouTube or whatever, and they are mm -hmm. like, like if you were to record the concert, like you would just be recording <laughs> your boy <laughs> the whole time and that's how you get these fan camp things it's like they're recording whoever they're obsessed with the most yeah the entire concert yeah yeah she just had a problem where the person directly in front of her kept putting up a banner and so like she had to like lean over into my side to record some but we yeah. made room we made it work yeah i was lucky that everybody in front of me was kind of short and so nice. i was Clutch. able to see I made it a point to not look behind me because I didn't want to feel guilty. Um, <laughs> so that probably makes me a terrible person, but I couldn't be in my head about it all night. It wasn't going to work. Yeah. So they did have a different translator. It was a, a female translator this time. So there were no Optimus Prime jokes. That okay. was a totally original the first time. I think she was also a better translator. They might have fired the first guy. You don't think, I think he just wasn't going with, I don't know. He just was, Maybe he was a local translator. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, the, I guess Juhan did his, what's my name? Cause I'm your honey intro. So that was the same. Okay. But, um, all the other guys mostly, and I think did also a, you know, what's my name? Who am I sort of intro, which is kind of what he did before. Uh, Min did this thing where he's like, okay, I want to try something. And he starts like. He makes a fist and he does a little like circular motion with it and he just goes ooh, 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 like he wanted to start a chant right and okay. so everybody like followed and and did it and he's like oh yeah success so then for the rest of the night whenever there was like a lull like after a vcr or something people would start doing it and it was kind of funny except later um juhan came out and was like if you don't all do it in sync, it sounds like booze. And he was happy <laughs> about it. <laughs> and so then and we all had to cheer proper, so we felt better. So that was Dang. pretty cute. Oh, these guys are quick on their feet. This is this is cool. <laughs> oh, and I got full on confetti every time because I was I was so much closer this time. Oh, I was okay. in. I want to say like if you count the front two orchestra rows, I was in the seventh row. Oh, so like they looked like real people. It's like that's I could eleven see. rows closer than we were. It was so good, but still not close enough. I need to find a way to get closer next time. <laughs> I don't know how people get these good good tickets. No. They did not do the confetti falling from the stage during that one song. So 
Juhan did not get a head full of confetti and did not say that he didn't know it was going to happen. So I think he legitimately didn't know that was going to happen last time. Okay. That's crazy. And so in that, that section where it's just, it was um, Ki-hyun, Min-hyuk, and Juhan um, making time for the other guys to go get ready for the solo stages, they, um, their little comedy bit was doing spoilers of what was about to happen. The extra joke being everyone already knew what was about to happen because we've all been on Twitter and saw fan camps of all the solo stuff. Oh, wow. It's that meta. That's pretty good. They just like know how crazy everybody is and they just lean into it. Yeah. Well, they did ask. They're like, is there anybody here who actually hasn't seen it? And some people are who doesn't know what's coming next. And, and a bunch of people cheered and they're like, oh, really? And I'm like, you all are liars. I do <laughs> not believe you. <laughs> they just like to cheer. Yeah. Um, let's see what else happens. Um, oh, in the solo stages, the first one that happens is Hyung Ones. And so he was the dance heavy one, if you remember. Oh, yeah. And I was like, do I not remember how he looked last time? Like, what's happening? Something's different. And he's wearing a crop top. And I swore he hadn't been wearing one before. And it was like super short in the back and like came to a point in the front. And then he had like a friggin' belly chain on and there were abs everywhere. And I was just like, I feel like I would have remembered this if That's, this had happened before. Yeah, that sounds different. Yeah, so later they they talked about it and like he chose it just like that was the first time he was wearing it. So I'm like, okay, I'm not crazy. But then also I was like, is Young One moving up the rankings of my favorite boys? What is <laughs> happening? Oh my god. So I had a little um bias wrecker. No, no, he's still he's not <laughs> he's not got it, it just I had a little existential crisis, but I got over it. It's not all about the abs. It's fine. <laughs> Could he be a bias wrecker wrecker? Ooh, I don't know. Probably. The problem with <laughs> Monster X is like it's impossible to have a bi like just one favorite because they're all very good boys, right? They're all excellent in their own way, and they're all always coming for you. Okay, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then so you know during the banger section where it's just like three in a row that are really good yeah the last songs quote unquote in the the yeah the encore section so um there are two like really good intense juhan raps in there one in the song zone and one in fallen and so the first when we saw them in new york he did them because it was the first night but in the other concerts since then he makes one of the other members do it other than Chang Kyung because he's a rapper. And so tonight he, or that night he, um, he, he tried to make Ki Hyun do it before uh, zone, the, the earlier of the songs. And he was just like, no, I can't do this. This I'm not a rap. He was like trying to get away. And Juwon's just like, you're going to freaking do this rap. <laughs> and so he did it and he did pretty okay. And then later he came back after him um, in Fallen and was like, you're going to do this one now. And he did it again. But then he just laid down on the stage because he was so embarrassed. He's like, <laughs> I'm not a rapper. And he was there for a solid 30 seconds. And the background dancers had to come up and be like, okay, you have to get up now. Like, <laughs> you cannot lay on the stage for the rest of this concert. <laughs> This is pretty good, yeah. It's a lot, dude. Yeah, it sounds like a lot. I mean, the, so you're saying like all basically all the songs and the attire was almost identical. Yes, and then just the bits in between were, you know, all the talky okay. bits were different. Yeah, so all the all the bits were good, were different. That's that's impressive. I like that. Yeah. These these boys work hard. Oh, and then um, during Fallen, the one where they normally play around in water, they couldn't. Like, I guess this theater was more strict about it. But at the very end, Min took a water bottle and like whipped it back and forth and like sprayed the crowd. And I was close enough. I got splashed a little bit. Oh, nice. And then the girl who was in front of me, who I had talked to earlier, she turned around after that and she's just like, we were baptized. Oh, my like, God. You're adorable. <laughs> oh, man, that's why the confetti was so hard to pick up. I just realized because it was like wet confetti when oh. we were when we saw them in New York, they were like we got to see them try to clean the stage and they were like trying to use like, like, um, like 
thin plastic like cutting board looking things like scoop oh, yeah. the confetti off the ground because i guess it was just it was just wet confetti that, that makes, makes more a sense. lot more sense now yeah, okay. i mean i even had trouble uh, in chicago like a bunch of it had gone down my top and i'm just like trying to dig all this confetti <laughs> out of my bra and it was it was tough did the streamers miss you did they go to the far? streamers i got tangled up in them again but i did not get hit full on in the face <laughs> like last time I would have thought the streamers were just gone straight over row five. No, they um, they came in at all heights. I guess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, then they you know did their thing and went away, and then began the waiting. And um, what Chicago did, which was pretty good, is that during when we they let in all the VIP folks early, um, they had the person who was in charge going around telling the exact instructions for for after the concert and what's going to happen for the high touch and she had a little little box with a little microphone which still wasn't great but like it was a little bit louder than before so like going into the end you knew what to expect which was a little bit more organized um and they were very very hardcore about saying like you cannot film anything during the high touch like she was like we know you all are sneaky. If you have a clear bag, it's got to be on your left hand side of your body. So you can't just put Damn. your camera in there. You can't put your phone in your pocket with the camera sticking out. If anybody catches you, they will make you delete the footage. Like, because they had clearly been on Twitter and seen all the other people who had done this shit. To oh. film the high That's step. not that much of a punishment. That's like, I just don't know why they're so intense about it. Like, yeah it's it, just walking by them and waving but it's like an opportunity to maybe like accidentally see one of the boys in like a way that they're maybe don't want to be represented but that would only be if like there's like an altercation that occurs or something because i guess what we saw from them was just them waving behind glass like they, it, if somebody had filmed it it would have been nothing yeah but if like i guess like a crazy person starts like doing something they don't want people filming it I guess that's true. Even though, like, if something crazy happens, somebody would probably start filming. <laughs> I don't know. It, <laughs> yeah. I, I I can see why. It's the only opportunity that you have to, like, maybe get footage of them doing not their performance, basically. Yeah. Um, so they're just trying to keep the image clean. But uh, they, they were real intense about the... We know what you guys are up to. We've seen Twitter too. Yeah. So it's not happening. I don't even get why they want to film it. But I mean because it's more footage of the boys and then you get to like like so when they do um meet and greet stuff in Korea where like they have a good two to three minutes where they meet with each boy and like it's a whole big thing. Um Usually people will have somebody else film their interaction from the crowd. So that way they get to like have the moment that they talked to the boy on footage forever, you know? Oh, okay. But it's, it's the, it's the footage is like owned by the Monster X production and they can choose. No, no, no. They'll just you. have a friend who's like at a different spot in the line. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That seems equally risky as this. This is why I am confused. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, I mean, but the moral of the story is just like, we always just want more footage of these boys. So this is why people will do things like yeah. have their cameras sticking out of their pants and try to sneak by. Yeah, it probably feels fun to be like, I got you guys footage for the community <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, also that. Yeah, yeah like the rest of us eat it up. Like, of course. <laughs> yeah. So then, um, similarly to when we were in New York, we got um, corralled over into some new seats just along the one side. And um, I turn around and sitting directly behind me is the girl with the LED mask from last time who was in front of me in line for the high touch. <laughs> That's crazy. And I was just like, no, you have to be, I have to get away from her. I cannot like have her distracting mask anywhere near this <laughs> because if men doesn't look at me this time i don't have another chance it's done <laughs> but i did turn around and went hey were you in new york i think i was behind you and she's like yeah oh hi so i was i was nice to her but then as soon as i was able to i got away from her 
So like I was in the very, very front part during this. And um, at a certain point, the poor guys trying to clean up all the confetti were like, all right, like five, six rows of you got to move because we need to sweep up all this confetti. So I got moved somewhere else. And in that shuffling, like I managed to get behind someone who was like, okay, you are on my level, normal person, like nothing super distracting about what you're wearing <laughs> or carrying. I think, I think this is my best shot. <laughs> okay. And so at a certain point, get in line, get called up to go. And they have the high touch like set in a downstairs section. So we had to go down some stairs and they handed out the posters on the way in instead of getting the posters on the way out. Um, and they were kind of like rushing us through, I guess, like whoever had been in front, like went through pretty fast and like the lines weren't going, like there were holes in the line basically. So they're just like, come on, get through. And um, I had been messaging you earlier going like, okay, I have a plan. I'm gonna. This is a gonna... weird plan. <laughs> This is like, you texted me in like the hour you had to wait or whatever, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Well, right after I saw the girl with the LED mask, I was like, oh no, it's happening again. <laughs> um, but yeah, so my plan was I was going to wink. I, <laughs> I don't get I was going to wave, but also wink. Okay, so I, it was, I think inspired because on Twitter earlier, I had seen somebody posting like Chang Kyun had, had winked at them and then they like melted a little bit. And I was like. I was kind of like, somebody needs to throw these boys off their game, right? Like, everybody else is coming in just being like, oh, no, excited. Like, what if they got winked at for once? Uh, which is probably not a for once. Like, other people have winked at them. But I don't know. I was just, I needed a plan. And this was the plan I came up with. Right, this and is, so, like, yeah. This is, like, the opposite of a Sarah move. Right? <laughs> I know. Yes. Yes. Like you. I'm, I'm not somebody like, who goes around winking at people. Yeah. Usually you'd be like, "Oh, that's like high chance of making them feel uncomfortable. Like that's an inappropriate thing to do." <laughs> I thought this would be funny. I didn't think it would make them uncomfortable. But now, oh, I'm second guessing everything <laughs> in my life. It's okay. I did not succeed. Um, but, but also, this is. The wink is not going to increase the chances of them looking at you because they have to have already been looking at you. Oh yeah, to this, see the this wink. was not. This was not about getting looked at. This was about sending a message. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> you know, yeah, you went like just... next level with this. Like you're trying to get even more out of this than. <laughs> I don't. I don't. You know what? I don't. I have no excuse for my behavior. I don't know where it came from, but I was convinced this was the way to go. But you know, as. You mentioned I'm not a winker, so while I was waiting, I was practicing winking a little bit, and I was like, I hope nobody is looking at me, because I look like I have a twitch right now, but that's okay. Um, oh my so, we finally get down, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna wink at them, and I see ahead of me, I can kind of see the boys, but I'm not up to the front of the line yet, and I notice the line is a little bit further away from the glass than last time. And there is some girl who just like full on like rushes at the glass in front of Juhan and is just like up close and waving and really excited. And then like security pulls her back and they're like, no, you got to be over here. Oh, shit. It, something happened. Damn. Like nothing like it wasn't that dramatic, but she was That's... just like, I'm getting closer. And they were not having it. Yeah, security security is getting involved. That's you're breaking the rules. I mean, it was just it was a gentle sort of just like, no, you got to move. But they were, you know, they were. I think they were prepared for this. Did you see Juhan? Juhani in this? Were you able to see uh, him? Yeah, I could. I, he was just like, yeah, I get lunched at all the time. Okay. <laughs> he did not see, he did not react. They don't go into like a somewhat defensive, different look for like a second. <laughs> I didn't like notice it, but I was also kind of focused on her, <laughs> you know, in that gotcha. moment. Okay. But um, so I get in there and, and the first person is Ki Hume. The, the main singer, if you remember. Okay, different um, order. Yeah. And so I'm waving, and I, I wink, and I feel like like he's looking at me. He did not react. And I was like, I don't think I, I don't, I don't know that I winked hard enough. Like, I don't know that I did anything, you know? Like, like did I? <laughs> I, didn't I, don't... Realize, I didn't realize you are winking at everybody. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. I'm just like, fuck it. I'm going to wink at all of these motherfuckers. Oh. Um. 
<laughs> and then, like, also because we were far enough back, it was almost like, wait, are they going to see me wink at all of them? Is that also going to be awkward? So that started getting in my brain. But I was like, okay, that was not a successful wink. I think I didn't do anything. So next was Chang Kyun. And I was like, all right, I got to go in for this wink. I got to do this extra hard. I winked so hard that both of my eyes closed. So I, you know, went in thinking I was going to do this little flirty wink. And what I did was I slow motion blinked at him. Basically. I was going to say you should just wink with both eyes. <laughs> yeah, I just like... I don't, I don't know. My brain was like oh dissolving at this point. <laughs> so next is Juhan. And, and half of my mind is like, okay, that was too hard. You got to pull back, pull back, but not all the way back. And the other half of my brain was like, stop it. You can't do this. This is not working. Mint's coming up. You're going to fuck it all up. <laughs> so I think I half winked at Juhan. He didn't notice. He was w waving, made eye contact. Everything was fine. And then, like, just thank God for masks, because I feel like my mouth and the rest of my face was just like, what is happening right now? What are these <laughs> poor life choices I have made? Um, and then it was Min. And, like, I full abandoned the winking plan. I'm like, this is not working. I cannot screw this up. And, like, he's up against the glass. And, like, time slowed down. And I'm like, oh, no, he's not going to look at me. He's just, he's just not. It's not going to happen. Um... But he did. He actually looked at me and he waved and all was right with the world. And then Hyungwon was there too after that. I don't know. My brain was mush. I waved at him. It was kind of a blur because <laughs> I guess if anyone is after men, I can't look at them. I just don't, it doesn't register. That's what happened with Kihyun last time. Did you actually wave at your boy? I did. did I waved at him. Yes. Stare into his eyes? <laughs> oh God, I hope I waved at him. I'm pretty sure I waved at him. Yes, yes. Oh. Uh. I'm imagining you just like having your arm up, but it's not waving. <laughs> <Just> like... <laughs> that might have happened. <laughs> oh. That's what they needed to film. They needed to film you. <laughs> yeah. So we're not done yet because oh, um, after this, I start following everybody, you know, like out of the room, right? I get my phone out immediately to tell you that we're allowed to be friends again because Min has looked at me and I forgive you. Okay, thanks. Um, and while this is happening, we're going up some stairs, and then the people in front of me stop. And I realize they've led us the wrong way somehow. And so in turning around to tell the people behind me that we have to go, instead of saying, we have to go, I just go, ah, we fucked up pretty loudly. <laughs> and all the, like, mom babies around me laughed. And at this point, I look up from my phone and I realize that, A, we are still in this room because it is like a little, little mini theater underneath the theater and we have gone up the stairs that get you to the back seats and b no new people have entered the room so the boys are just looking at us and waving at us like sad animals in a zoo in their little cage <laughs> and c they definitely heard me just say oh we fucked up real fast <laughs> what okay the, the moral of the story is i cannot be trusted to be cool around these men at all <laughs> I'm a little confused about they saw you like stuck in a room with with like, like a okay so of the people. room the room we were in like had some stairs in it and then it also had a little like stairs out and so people had led us up the stairs that were still in the room like picture a little mini movie theater right oh, okay. where you've got the raised seating and that's where these stairs are but so when you turn around it's just these five boys behind glass looking at us not going up the right stairs and me going, oh, we fucked up. <laughs> Did security do anything to the, the group of you? No, they were just like, I don't even know. Like, I just think whoever was in front of the row, the front of the line was just like, oh, I've reached the wall and not where I was meant to go. Let's turn around. Okay. Yeah, I guess you weren't going towards the boys. So it we were just confused. Oh, incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Was, was the buy event as non eventful as the first time? Or um well the buy event had um I looked this up. It's called a send off event. There oh, we go, all official and stuff. Um when we finally got out the right stairs, um, I saw where we were being led to like a place where I was gonna end up in a similar position to last time where we we're like two rows over. 
But in some closer seating, there was just like an empty seat that somebody had not filled in yet. So I just sat in it. And then I was close enough that when I stood up while they were leaving, I could see them. Mm, clutch. Yeah. Nice. Were they as cool when they left as they were the rest of the, the time? I mean. I didn't see. We didn't they were see in, them last time. So. They were in slightly cute mode, I think. Okay. Well, at least um, Min came down and then like while he was leaving, he had to go up some stairs and he just like jumped down the stairs and came back and waved and then went away. And that was cute. Okay. They've got to be exhausted. Jesus. Oh, yeah. And that was like. They had done a show the night before. Like, oof, that's, yeah. that's got to be too and much. And they did shows in between New York and Chicago, right? Uh, they had one show in between, show. I think. Okay. That's still a lot, but yeah. But yeah, they're like averaging like, I don't know, like every other day they do a show, basically. It's kind okay. of how it Yeah. Damn. What an oh, adventure, yeah. Sarah. <laughs> he finally <laughs> looked at me, and I only made <laughs> a little bit of a fool of myself. Yeah. Good stuff. Good. Oof. 